It's Marie from AMP Global. Business may unfortunately be a little bit slow for all of us, but that just gives us all the perfect opportunity to work on things for our business that we might not normally get a chance to work on. One example of that is SEO. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. So what that means is that when someone, a potential customer, is searching on the web for, say, car audio shop in Clearwater, Florida, or replace my radio in northern Texas. That means that Google or whatever other search engine they're using recognizes your website as the perfect match for that person and bubbles you right to the top. So that's called your page ranking. So these SEO tactics anyone can do and they will help you get your website ready and healthy for those potential customers to find you. A healthy and optimized website comprises of a lot of different things, from site speed to inbound links, but today we're going to start with the basics, the things that are really important and also really easy for you to do, whether you're at home or in the office or anywhere you have access to your computer. So the first thing is understanding the language that people search in. Google takes into account all of the website copy, all of the words that are written on your website. So if you have a website that's full of industry terms and consumers are searching and the language they use is totally different from that, unfortunately, your website will never rank for any of these important search terms. So step one is finding out the language that consumers, your potential customers, are searching for. The first step to understanding what language your consumer is searching for are to understand there are two different types of search terms. So search terms are a single word or a group of words that people are searching for in Google. There are short tail search terms and long tail search words. Short tail search words are shorter words, maybe one or two words, they have a lot of search volume, which makes them sound really great, but they have a lot of competition and also the, they're less likely to convert. An example would be radio or car radio or car audio. The people using those search terms might be looking for your store, they might be looking for an installation, or they might just be looking for information or they have a radio that broke. It really doesn't, you really can't tell. A long tail search word, they have less volume, less competition, but they're more likely to convert into a customer for you. So an example of this would be car audio shop in Clearwater, Florida. So when you're developing your target list of keywords, so this is identifying what words you're going to go after to be ranked on Google, you want to develop a healthy mix of short tail keywords and long tail keywords with a special focus on those long tail keywords, knowing that the people that are searching for them are more likely to become a customer that comes to your store for an installation. Now let's talk about how you actually find out what those keywords are. To find out what language your customers are searching in, you can use Google's free tool in their AdWords tool. Normally, AdWords is used to run paid search, but within the site, they actually had a key, have a keyword planner that can help you with your SEO. After you go to google.com slash AdWords, look for the Tools and Settings section. Down there, you wanna click on Planning and Keyword Planner. and then you want to use the discover new keywords. So what you're going to do here is a couple different searches from general to the different categories of products that you carry, whether it be safety or audio or radio replacement. So let's start with general. 
I'm going to click in Car Audio and Car Audio Shop and click Get, Get Results. And Google is going to tell me how much, how much average searches are done for those keywords that I've selected, but then also give me some ideas for some other additional types of keywords that people search for. It'll also let you know whether there's high competition or low competition. That just means how many other websites use those words. So if you find a keyword that has high search volume but low competition, that's also a good one to add to your target list. Once you've done your search, you can download your keyword ideas and then go back and do a different search. And then you can keep doing searches until you've come up with your full list. And now you'll have a document of all the different keywords that you can now take to your website and optimize your website for search. Now, what do we do with these keywords? The first thing that we need to do is we need to re-look at all of our website copy, the words that are on your website, and you want to find ways that you can incorporate these keywords that you've targeted into your website copy. It could be product names, it could be in your description, it could be on different web pages. Another really great place that you can integrate all those new keywords that you're targeting is into a blog. A blog, because of its nature, you're posting different posts every day, that gives you the opportunity to put as much keywords into your content and into your website as possible. You don't want to stuff a single blog post with every single keyword, but pick one or two and create a blog post about it. It could be how-tos, it could be showing off your installs that you've done, it could be information about your shop, all sorts of different topics that you can then create a different daily blog or a weekly blog or whatever you feel comfortable with. You can share them on your Facebook page, on your Instagram, wherever that you reach your consumers. And you can use this time right now to write a bunch of different blog posts. Go back into your files, find old installation photos, integrate the keywords that you're targeting into that blog post while you're talking about that install and get a month's worth of blog posts, two months, three months, however much you can get to, and then you can schedule them once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever you feel comfortable with. It's a really great way to not only educate, but then also to build trust with your potential customers. And that's it, a couple of very simple steps that you can do right now, today, to make your website work harder for you and help build more business. Make sure you follow AMP Global on Facebook and our AMP Global YouTube channel and check out our AMP University for more marketing training, more website training, and of course, more product training. See you later, guys.